the topic is periodontal ligament. So what is periodontal ligament? Now, it is one of the uh, soft connective tissues, which uh, is the supporting tissues of the tooth. You may know that the periodontium is composed of your gingiva, periodontal ligament, your cementum, and the alveolar bone. Your cementum and alveolar bone form the hard tissue components of your periodontium, whereas your periodontal ligament and the gingiva form the soft tissue components. Now, earlier, they did a lot of research and different different species had different different kind of attachment between your tooth and your alveolar bone. Now various, uh, so finally in vertebrates they, they detected about four different types of attachment process that were noticed which include your fibrous attachment, your ankylosis, your hinged attachment and your gomphosis. Now what are the synonyms of the PDL or the periodontal ligament seen in humans? You have, it's also called as your desmodont, it's called as your gomphosis, it's called as your pericementum, periodontal membrane, also called as your alveolodental ligament. What, according to Carranza, it is defined as the periodontal ligament is a connective tissue that surrounds the root and connects it to the bone. How do you go about the develop? How does this periodontal ligament develop? Now the periodontal ligament develops as just uh, before even the tooth eruption starts. Now, as the tooth bud is erupting or it's formed into a cri uh, crypt of bone, bone, the collagen fibers produced by the fibroblasts in the loose connective tissue around the tooth bud are embedded into the newly formed cementum just immediately apical to your cemento enamel junction. And as the tooth is erupting out into the oral cavity, the new fibers are forming. If you see, the true periodontal ligament fibers are completely formed or they develop only once the tooth erupts into the oral cavity. If you see this picture, it clearly determines that you have the periodontal ligament forming from both the corners. One is from the bone and from your uh, cementum. The RC will represent your root cementum and the ABP is the alveolar bone process. So if you can see, the fibers from the alveolar bone processes are more longer when compared to the fibers from the cementum. Then finally, at one point, they intermingle with each other and this entire tissue of fibers or the bundles of fibers will be your parental ligament fibers and the center area would be your intermediate plexus. If you can see this picture, now initially, now as soon as the periodontal ligament fibers are formed, they are just arranged. But then, over a period of time, under the con continuous uh, du uh, du tooth eruption, the tooth gets stabilized. Once it gets stabilized in function, once it forms into occlusion, then your uh, other your principal fibers of periodontal ligament are arranged in certain bundles. So you can see the bu your bundles of arrangement of your periodontal ligament fibers. So I told that your intermediate plexus are nothing but your fibers which are present in the middle portion or splicing between your cementum and the, the fibers which are arising from your cementum and alveolar bone proper, they intermingle in the center area. These fibers are called as your inter intermediate plexus. What is the shape of your periodontal ligament? The shape of the periodontal ligament is R glass shaped and it is because it is narrowest in the mid root level. It is thin in the mesial surface when compared to the distal surfaces and the space is always, the periodontal ligament space gets reduced when the teeth are in a non-function and in an unerupted teeth. Whereas teeth in hyperfunction and teeth who are having the, the trauma from occlusion, are sub, who are subjected, the teeth that are subjected to high occlusal forces have widened periodontal ligament space. What is the average width of PDL? It is about 0.15 to 0.38 millimeters. It is different in different age groups. In about 11 to 16 years, it's noticed to be 0.21 millimeters. And then in about 32 to 52 years, it is about 0.18. And the least width is seen in the elderly age group of about 51 to 67 percent, uh, sorry, 67 years with about uh, 0.15 millimeters. Microscopic structure, when you, when you visualize the PDL under the microscope, this, uh, it, you can have the PDL that is related to the bone, the PDL that is related to the cementum and the middle zone. The one that is related to the bone is very much rich in blood vessels, whereas the one related to your cementum is very much rich in fibers or collagen bundles. The one in the middle zone has, has containing fewer cells and it has thinner collagen fibrils. What is it? When you see again the histological structure of the PDL, you have different si types of cells and you have different types of intercellular substance. So basically the composition of PDL can be divided into the cell, cellular component and the extra, uh, extracellular or the intercellular component. The cellular component include the variety of cells. You have the synthetic cells, you have resorptive cells, you have your uh, proliferating or the uh, mesenchymal or the progenitor cells. 
The composition, if you see the composition of the PDL, you have your cellular and the intercellular substances. The cellular substances include different forms of cells. You have your synthetic cells, you have your resorptive cells, you have your progenitor cells, and you have the defensive cells. And apart from that, you have one more group of cells, that is your cells of your epithelial cell rests of malices, the remnants of it, which are called as your cell rests of malices. Okay, and then coming to your intercellular substances includes your fibers, your ground substance, your blood vessels, nerves and lymphatics. Now let's see what are the synthetic cells. The synthetic cells include your fibroblasts, your osteoclasts, uh, your osteoblasts, sorry. Your synthetic cells include your fibroblasts, your osteoblasts and your cementoblasts. Whereas your resorptive cells include again your fibroblasts your osteoclast and your cementoclast. The progenitor cells include your undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. The defensive cells include of the PDL include your macrophages, lymphocytes and your mast cells. And then finally, the last group of cells that are present in your PDL are your epithelial cell rests of malices, which are nothing but your remnants of your Hertwig's epithelial root sheet. Hertwig's epithelial root sheet. And coming to the extracellular substances, they include your fibers and your ground substance. The fibers mainly your collagen comprising of the collagen and then your oxytalin fibers and your reticular fibers. The ground substance include your glycosaminoglycans or the GAGs and your glycoproteins. The collagen fibers, they're the most important fiber, fiber group which is embedded into bundles or found in bundle form. They're embedded from the cementum and that of the alveolar bone on the other side into the periodontal ligament space. These terminal ends of the fibers are called as your Sharpie's fibers. The elastic fibers are mostly all, or most of the time, they're restricted just to your blood vessels. The majority of the fibers are your collagen and they're arranged in bundles following a wavy course. What are the principal fibers of your PDL? There are different five groups of principal fibers, which include your alveolar crest fibers, your horizontal fibers, oblique fibers, apical, and your interradicular fibers. You have a transeptal group of fibers, but actually these are your gingival group of fibers, but they still are considered as one of the important principal fibers of your periodontal ligament. Coming to the function of each of the fibers, now the transeptal fibers, they're also called as the interdental ligament and they can be regenerated immediately after damage. They're the first ones to get destroyed and they're the first one to regenerate. They extend interproximally over the alveolar crest, bone, bony crest, embedded in the cementum of your adjacent teeth. And they're considered the gingival fibers because they lack the osseous attachment. And then you have your alveolar crest fibers which arises or which extend obliquely from your alveolar, uh, from the cementum just beneath the junction epithelium to your alveolar crest. Now what is the function of them? They prevent extrusion of the tooth and resist lateral movements of the tooth. You have your oblique fibers, they are again the largest group. Now this group of fibers are the ones which take in the maximum amount of the occlusal load. You have your horizontal group of fibers which extend again at right angles to the long axis of the tooth. They extend from the cementum to the alveolar bone and they resist the vertical displacement of the Teeth. You have your apical fibers. Now these apical group of fibers, they are present in an apical direction and they radiate in an irregular fashion from the cementum to the bone in the apical area. And then you have your interradicular fibers. Now they are the fibers which are present between the radicular surfaces, that is between, you know, multi, especially in a multi-rooted tooth, uh, trifurcation or the bifurcation areas. So you can see this picture showing the arrangement of the different different group of principal fibers. Coming to the secondary group, you have different secondary group of fibers also. Now these fibers interdigitate at right angles and they splay around and between the regular fiber bundles. These include your oxytalin fibers and reticular fibers. Now what are the oxytalin fibers? They are immature elastic fibers with an orientation of the fibers with running in an axial direction, extending from the cementum or the bony wall and then of the uh, bony uh, from the cementum or the bone to the wall of the blood vessel. They form a complex network in the vicinity of the apex. The function is not known, but they are said to play an important role in supporting the blood vessel vasculature of the PDL. You see the addition to all these fibers, you have small collagen fibers which are arranged in different directions forming plexus. So apart from the fibers being collagen fibers being arranged in bundles, you also have collagen fibers which are interspersed between as intercellular areas. Now they are closely associated with the principal fibers and they are called as the indifferent fiber plexus. 
Coming to the ground substance, the important constituents of your ground substance we know are your glycosaminoglycans and your proteoglycans, which include your hyaluronic acid, okay, and your chondroitin sulfate, etc. Now, the ground substance of the PDL is composed 70% of water, much of which is your much of which is in a bound form. The viscoelastic nature of the PDL is mainly because of your ground substance. Coming to the structures of PDL present in the connective tissue of the, uh, the structures that are present in the connective tissue of the PDL include your blood vessels, lymphatics, your nerve supply, and your semanticles. What are the blood vessels? The sources of blood vessels. There are three important sources: your dental artery, interradicular artery, and the interdental artery. You see the apical vessels of the dental artery mainly before the apical uh, before the artery perforates or before the artery penetrates into the apical foramen to supply the radicular portion of your pulp, it, it gives off branches into your PDL to supply your periodontal ligament. Coming to the lymphatics, the lymphatics usually follow your blood vessels and then most of the time they drain the, the, uh, the, the lymphatics of your PDL drain into the submandibular and the submental group of lymph nodes. You see the nerve supply, you have two, two groups of nerve supply, you have your sensory and you have your autonomic. The sensory fibers are uh, associated with the nociception and mechanoreception, whereas your autonomic fibers are associated mainly to supply the PDL or uh, blood vessel. Coming to the PDL nerve fibers, which are both can be both myelinated and unmyelinated. Now let's see the unmyelinated group of fibers, which include your free nerve index, which have a tree-like ramifications. Now they are basically responsible for nociception and your mechanoreceptors act as mechanoreceptors. You have Ruffini's end organs, again they act as mechanoreceptors. You have your coiled nerve endings, which act as your again your mechanoreceptors. You have your encaps encapsulated spinal. Uh, sorry, encapsulated spindle type of fibers or nerve endings which are found associated with your root apex. The functions of your PDL, you have your formative function, you have your physical function, you have remodeling function, nutritional function and you have your sensory function. Let's see what are the physical functions, in what way your PDL has a physical function. Your physical function of the PDL include your provision. Now your PDL acts as a soft tissue casing or it basically provides cushion to your tooth. If there is no cushion, Cushioning, it basically providing cushioning effects because of the presence of fibers, your ground substance. It, it, it also helps in transmission of the occlusal forces from the PDL to the bone. And then it helps in attachment of the teeth to the bone. And then maintenance of gingival tissues, architecture of your gingival tissues. And then it helps in maintaining the architecture of your gingival tissues. And then resistance to the impact of occlusal forces. Now this resistance to impact of occlusal forces can be explained by two theories. One is your viscoelastic theory and one is a tensional theory. According to the tensional theory, they say it is mainly your periodontal ligament fibers, which are the ones which are capable of absorbing all the occlusal forces and then directing it towards the bone. What do they do? Once, the, once there are some occlusal forces onto the tooth surface, all the occlusal forces are absorbed by your periodontal ligament fibers. First, they are intermingled. So they, they are twined together. They untwine and they stretch, stretch, and then they, they spread this uh, or they uh, distribute this force to your alveolar bone. That is your tensional theory. According to the viscoelastic theory, what it says is that it basically considers that the fibers just play a secondary role in your uh, resistance to your occlusal forces. The primary role is played by the fluid movement in within your periodontal ligament and that of the alveolar bone. Now, what it says is when forces are transmitted to the tooth surface, the extracellular fluid that is present will pass from the PDL into the marrow spaces through your cribriform plate. And then after the entire fluid is depleted from the PDL, what happens is the tissue, uh, now, the, now it is the responsibility of your uh, PDL fibers to stretch in and then and they tighten. This will lead to what is called as a blood vessel, uh, blood vessel stenosis. Once the blood vessel gets stenosed in that area, there is a pooling of blood or there is an arterial back pressure causing ballooning of the vessels. And then this extracellular, uh, the fluid which is lost is replenished back into the periodontal ligament. Now this is what is viscoelastic theory. Now that would end your viscoelastic theory with the physical functions. Now let's see what about the other functions. Now we already spoke that the PDL also has certain functions that is your formative and remodeling function. Now the concept of regeneration or the formation of new attachment after a disease process is mainly related to the formative and the remodeling property of your periodontal ligament. Your periodontal ligament has some different specialized type of cells that is your progenitor cells. Now these progenitor cells 
are your undifferentiated mesenchymal cells which have the capacity to differentiate into any kind of cell lineage you want. Either they can differentiate into the osteoblast, they can differentiate into your cementoblast and they can differentiate into your fibroblast depending on the signal or the depending on what is required. So that's why the entire formative and the remodeling property of your uh, uh, tissues lies in your periodontal ligament. So if you can help your periodontal ligament cells to repopulate in the area of diseased surface then you can form a new regenerated tissue in that area. Apart from that you have your sensory function. The sensory function is mainly proprioception. So whenever you are chewing you are able to appreciate the chewing, the movement of food or you are able to appreciate all these uh, forces or uh, the perception of the food is mainly because of the presence of your periodontal ligament which is present, which is binding your tooth with that of your alveolar bone. And that will come, with that we come to an end of your periodontal ligament. Thank you.